Hello, my name is John David, and I'm the writer, producer, and performer of the Mafia Hairdresser Chronicles. And this special segment is called John David and Goliath. And the reason for that is because I'm John David, and I'm trying to tackle my Goliath. My Goliath is me standing up for myself against a big giant, a corporate giant called the Boca Raton LLC, or otherwise known as Northview Hotel Group and MSD Partners. You see, I got this job, this great job, I thought, at the Boca Raton Salon. And it turned out to be nothing but a case of fraud. And the managers lied. But they didn't just lie to me. They lied to hundreds of other employees as well. And it ruined our careers, some of us. And I'm going to tell you about how I saw other people walking out of their jobs so angry because they couldn't make money. And I'll tell you about my coworkers who couldn't make money. We all had to have second jobs. And this was a property that was primed to be the crown jewel out of all the properties uh, that the Northview Hotel Group had acquired over the years. In this podcast, in this episode, episode three, I'm going to tell you um, about the employees I worked for, as well as what I'm going through now. So welcome to this special episode, episode three of John David and Goliath. So I just emailed my landlord yesterday, and I said, dear landlord, I, bad news, I have to move. This is a man who lives in the building. He owns three units. He lives in one. And I live on the beach in uh, a beautiful condo building. I am on the fourth floor of five. I have this huge balcony that runs from my room all the way down past the spare bedroom, all the way to the living room. The full length of the living room has beautiful sliding doors. and it faces north. Well, what faces east is another balcony, another sliding door off of the dining room. And when I moved here, I got a new bed, new bureau. I put in a new um, two-seater desk. It runs the whole length of this master bedroom, and it has a tower for shelving. And that was a friend of mine. It used to be in her condo, and it used to be an L, but I made it long so it could have two computers because um, I'm a writer. And um, two bathrooms, newly redone, beautiful, a walk-through galley kitchen, beautiful kitchen. Um, I had refinished and made my own uh, tabletop, and I bought legs to make it counter height because I wanted uh, a, a natural kind of whitewash uh, finish on that tabletop, and I re- I stained it, sanded it all myself, and verithaned it, and it's beautiful, and I love the legs on it. They're white, and I bought white leather chairs, four of them at counter height, and it's just the best thing. You can just walk through the kitchen, put your groceries on this table, and just unload the grocery bags from there. It's super cool. And the living room, it's gorgeous. It's a mix of some of my old stuff, some antique stuff, But mostly, the showcase is the big, huge, white, plushy couch. A white couch. Isn't that so cool? Moved from uh, Chicago to Florida, and I have white furniture. I just think that's super cool. But all of that's going to go away. I'm going to basically give it away or maybe give it to the landlord. I told him if he wants to rent this place furnished, he can have the furniture because I am also going to file bankruptcy. Or maybe. I haven't quite decided. I, I hate to say that publicly, and but it, it's possible. I might have to do that. Ugh. And it's so sad. It makes me so sad because I'm just going to lose all of this material stuff, but I'm not my stuff, and I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm not even depressed or having any, any sleepless nights about it. I've moved from uh, Chicago to Toronto and left in the middle of the night when my, me and my partner broke up my fiancé, I should say, and I left everything to move up there, and I certainly left everything there that I didn't have to carry home, and I started new a couple times in my life. And it's okay. You know, I just know I'll have new stuff, 
It's just so sad. I'm breaking a lease and the landlord was totally cool with it. He knew what I was doing with the Boca Raton. So that's just sad. That's where I stand now. But let me tell you about the Boca Raton. You know, as I told you, I'd moved here to get that job. I secured that job. But the managers opened uh, the salon and spa knowing full well that the phones were down. And they were managers in the salon and spa industry. There was a salon manager, and then there's a spa manager, which was over her. They hired all of us people in the salon and spa, manicurists, facialists, massage therapists. We are all specialists. We're all top of our game. They hired us knowing full well that the phone server from the Waldorf Astoria, the previous owner of the big company, the Boca Raton LLC, they took their phone server and the new company, Northview Hotel Group, which is a hotel management company. And I use that term very sparingly because they don't really care about the management of the staff. They put mandates down from the top of, from their board, but it, they don't really manage. They're not that hands on. They're way up high. They're just about the money. They don't actually physically manage. They hire managers that may be great in their their game for the hotel management, but they don't actually manage. But there was a mandate when the Waldorf Astoria took the phone server and then the Northview Hotel Group put in a new phone se- server and they discovered that phone lines needed fiber optics. They decided to open anyway. And even though there was one phone number that routed right into the property with five hotels, caddies, tea time reservations, the golf club, the yacht club, the beach club, the pools, the lazy river that just opened about mid time when I was there. Uh, all those needed reservations and bookings and scheduling, plus all the different concierge. There's concierges in some of the hotels for each floor or each room. Some of the hotels had that. And you had to call in the one number. So what they did was they hired hundreds of phone operators to do the job of what a computer should have been doing, which would have done it quicker and faster than humans could possibly do. And of course, there was missed calls. There was dropped calls. And for the salon specifically, the upper management had met a mandate to not tell any of the staff members what was going on, even though they were hired on commission and they would be assuming that there was working phone lines, but there weren't. What happened was they made a mandate not to tell the employees and a mandate to tell the customers to email for an appointment for the hair salon. The spa was a little different. They had a higher uh, mandate than people in the salon. They were routed to the call center in the spa. A lot of those calls were dropped and and failed, but a lot of them weren't. So the spa was a little bit more busy than us in the salon, the manicures and the hairdressers. Now, they also had a policy that stuck and the members and hotel guests and clients of the salon that booked appointments that made it through the maze or emailed for appointment, if they didn't make their appointment or schedule, reschedule it within 24 hours, they paid for that appointment fully. I was paid handsomely for people who never showed up. And the manager of the salon said, that's just the way rich people are, which is ridiculous. And it was because they couldn't book and then reschedule and they lost their money. That's just a crying shame. I'm telling those people, you were ripped off. These people were paying 35 grand a year for membership and now they're paying a hundred grand and they found it nearly impossible to get a tea time found it nearly impossible to get a hair appointment. They were paying this huge membership and they couldn't even sometimes call in to reach the docks or the people managing their boat. They were all having problems. And if they tried to make a reservation for the lazy river or the pool, they would find that they had to walk personally from their hotel or from their homes and park their cars to get a reservation for family for special dates at like the pools or the clubhouses. It was always a hassle. But these people didn't know the reason was because the phone server was down. 
And the upper management had a mandate. They had meetings about it and emails about it. Do not offer that information to the members and especially not the employees. Now, when I worked there, I would go park in the, in the uh, parking lot, which was on the north side of the property. I had a nice drive through the uh, golf course and then an old decrepit parking lot structure. And I'm sure that had to be renovated since I've not been there. But when I would go home and sometimes when I would go to work in the mornings of those days where I'd sit around doing nothing, there was always a waiter or a waitress quitting. And they were in a huff. They were like, this is my last day. This place sucks. Hello, dear listeners. In the future, I may have to have a GoFundMe page to raise money for lawyers, but right now I am asking you to support me and support this podcast by purchasing my books in paperback or ebook at amazon.com or ebooks at barnesandnoble.com. Mafia Hairdresser is based on my time in LA when I was a private hairdresser to a cocaine trafficking couple and a very well-known Chicago mobster in the 80s. The Glowstick Gods, the sequel to Mafia Hairdresser, is about the 90s when I was an A-list party boy and I traveled around the world chasing the best raves and parties while observing the demise of the entire scene when crystal meth came into being. And if you'd rather listen to my fabulously dangerous life instead of reading about it, you can just listen to season one and season two of this podcast, The Mafia Hairdresser Chronicles. Just go all the way to the beginning. And season three will be out in 2024. That's 2024. Hey, thanks for listening. There was always waiters and waitresses quitting. Well, it turns out that the restaurants had hired enough service to be as busy as one would be when it's the new cool restaurant or new cool resort opening back up after the pandemic. The problem was people couldn't call in through the phones to get reservations. It would be a very slim chance at the beginning, like in December, January, February of 21 into 22, that people could actually get in. And so there was a huge underperformance of money coming into the restaurants and they had to lay off people or not give them enough hours after hiring tons of people. And there were just not enough reservations and people were not making money. And so the waiters and waitresses and the cooks, the chefs, the sous chefs, the bus boys weren't making money either because their hours were cut. And that was because the phone lines were down. In the public, they just saw bad service there, there was a huge walkout last December of 222. People waited two, three hours for their meals, I heard. This is from a guest at the hotel. Now, the property is in financial duress right now. So the Boca Raton LLC, which is the MSD partners and the Northview Hotel Group, they are scrambling. The Boca Raton, the past year, has been just super underperforming and super underwater as far as money goes. My prediction says they're going to sell it. But who's going to want to buy a property where they have to take on all this debt from all the underperformance? I mean, the staff turnover alone is expensive when they trained us for the Michelin training so we could get the four stars. Well, we ain't going to be working the four stars the first year, are we, folks? Because it was a slippery slope of underperformance and lack of uh, good decisions that really cost them tons of money. Now, for me, what it meant was I had a client who came in and she told me why she couldn't book an appointment or why she couldn't reschedule an appointment, but she didn't want me standing around. And I went to the front desk, told people do not charge her for that. Then I went to HR and then I found out about the phone servers being down and that I was to take it up with my managers. So I punched out, I went home and I wrote, a letter. It had a whistleblower tone, but it basically said, you lied, you lied, you lied, and you're liars. But I want to talk to you about fixing this so I can continue working at the Boca Raton salon. The managers both emailed me and they agreed to a meeting the next day. And I knew that they sent the letter onto HR because it had a whistleblower tone to it. I also had a person on the inside. So I called that person 
And I said, what is up with the phone system? And they were, they're not a friend, but there's someone I know. And I used my reporter spidey sense to push at this person. And they divulged everything, not so much more that I was going to learn the next day with my meeting with my salon and spa manager, but they gave me so much information about the mandate that the employees were not to be told about the phone server being down. So the next day, I go into this meeting with the managers. The spa manager is in tears for the whole nearly full hour of this meeting. She's apologetic in one second, and then she's angry in another second, just constantly blubbering, where I had to say, listen, I'm the one that was wronged. I should be crying. I'm trying to work this out. And she kept on saying, well, we're so sorry, but you should have come to me. We're like a family. And I said, well, we are not like a family because you treated me so poorly and I was wronged. I appreciate that you feel that way and that you're a sensitive person. I always liked her. I still like her. She's a spiritual person. I pray she doesn't get fired over this podcast or anything because jobs are freaking hard to come by. I should know. And the spa manager, who's much more Eastern European in in many ways, because she is, and she was just like, look, quit crying. Let's move on. We're not getting anywhere uh, by you keep on telling JD that we're a family, blah, blah, blah. Even she came down. And I thought that was so professional. I loved her because she's cool as cucumber. But what the salon manager did say after I accused them of lying, lying, lying. They said, well, it's not our fault. We've had meetings about this and we were not allowed to tell you about the phone systems being down because the official statement from on top was it would have lowered the morale of the employees. And I... My jaw nearly dropped to the floor when she said that. They weren't allowed to tell me and the rest of the salon and spa members because it would have lowered our morale. No, what lowered the morale was we were standing around doing nothing because people couldn't call to make appointments. And we did not know that the reason why we were slow was the phone lines were down. No hairdresser. No facialist, no massage therapist, no manicurist is going to take a job knowingly with a company, knowing that the phones were down. All of us would have never taken that job at the newly opened, newly hyped Boca Raton salon or spa. We just wouldn't have done it. So when they said it would have lowered the morale of the employees, freaking lie. They didn't want to tell us because they knew we would have quit because we are salon professionals, spa professionals, and we only work at places where the phones actually fucking work. Oh, man. Isn't it crazy? Like, I know if you're listening to this and you go to salon, this is just uh, the most horrible situation. I know you can, you can, have empathy for your salon professional, you would feel for them. And I feel for all the salon professionals I worked with. But not only did that mandate hurt us, it did hurt all the employees that worked on tips in the the new restaurants that opened. They suffered. And it, it just ruined people's careers. Now, for me, what I did after that salon uh, meeting with the salon and spa manager, I, I had the day before called up one of the gold members. Now, one of the gold members is my client, and she and I became more uh, uh, intimate, if you will, because she was supposed to get her hair done on a Monday, but they cl- they called me the day before and said, well, we canceled gold members' uh, appointment with you because we're going to put carpet in the salon suite. And this, this is back when I was working in that one room two days a week. 
And so she actually called me because she had my phone number and says, hey, can you come to my apartment? And she lives across the street. She still lives across from me me today. In fact, I went over and did her hair today. Um, and she owns a salon, spa, resort, a big resort up in North Carolina. And she invited me, this is months ago, because she knew I was so slow at this salon, even when it opened up. And she said, hey, why don't you come work for us this summer? We need people in the summer because when Florida goes to the summer months, people travel up to places like my resort in North Carolina. And you can work there and you'll be very, very busy. We know you're so good or she knows I'm so good and, and so forth. And I said, well, I'll think about it. The day before I had this meeting with the salon and spa manager, I called her. I said, I will take the job. When does it start? She says, June 1st. That's when it really slows up in uh, Florida, but it gets busy in North Carolina. She says, I will even give you, you can stay at the chef's cabin because when they reopened the salon and spa and the resort up in North Carolina, they did not open reopen the uh, restaurant. And I said, all right, I'll just take the job. I have nothing better to do. I'm still working in Chicago, by the way. Once a week, I drive all the way from Florida to Chicago, work a week, and then I drive all the way back. That's a two-day road trip with my dogs. So, in this meeting with the salon and spa people, I say, I still want to work for the Boca Raton. I still want to work in the salon. Because when you guys get this phone fixed, I'm going to be very busy. You know I'm good. And they agreed, yes, I'm really good. And you know I'm the best person for the job. And they always said I was. You can talk to any of them, my coworkers, because they said that in public, in meetings. So they knew that I had the potential to really work the rest of my career there. And I thought so too. But the phones had to be worked on. And they said, well, the phones are not quite ready to be, you know, they're still doing the email thing and they're going to build an app for us so that clients can book through the app. And I said, well, that will never work. And the email thing, it's not working now. So I think you should be done with the phones and the phone should be fixed by November, right? And they said, oh, definitely by November. I said, okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work in North Carolina to continue building my Florida clientele. And they said, oh, with who? I said, well, there's a gold member who offered me this position. And that's when the spa manager started turning on me. She says, oh, we know you've been working uh, for someone at their home, and that is against the rules. I said, well, I know, but when I started doing her hair at home, or she's a neighbor and she lives across the street, yes, I still continued to do her hair at home, but that's because her partner, her wife, is autoimmune suppressed. And so she doesn't want to come in the salon and expose herself to the salon. She'd been there once, and she didn't like it. Again, the salon is not so great. It's not state-of-the-art, and it's not beautiful. And the stations are semi-close. And so she felt more comfortable if I came to her house. And I'm all for it. I was just like, you know, this is a special case. I didn't solicit people to do their hair at home, and it was just a special case. And I was not going to change that. And the spa manager started to threaten me with that, saying, like, I could be fired. I said, well... Do not go there because you guys are so shitty and such liars. I swear to God, that's just not the tack you want to take. I didn't threaten them like I was going to go to the authorities and report them for fraud, which I could have. I just wanted to stay working there and be happy there. I did not want them to be desperate and bring this up and then fire me for that. I'm not making trouble for them. And they also brought up the fact that I had given my phone number to the clients. And I said, actually, no, technically, I did not ever give my phone number to any client. The fact that they had my phone number was because it was on my website, because I still do here in Chicago, and they can search for it there. I had told them where my phone number was, because guess what? I made more appointments When the client would text me directly during a workday, and I would go to the front desk and say, so-and-so, book them, because they just texted me. Because, oh, they couldn't get through to the Boca Raton phone 
but they could get through to mine. So I was just trying to make a living doing the best that I could. Yes, it was against the rules to give my phone number out, and technically I didn't, but I did. And those clients booked, and I made more money booking clients that way than than the actual uh, staff getting called from the outside lines. So I put a stop to that as well. I just stopped responding to the clients because they said it was against the rules. So stupid, I could have stayed making more money had I booked my own clients through my phone at the Boca Raton Resort. Now, moving on this story, this meeting, they agreed that I could take a leave of absence, although I would have to officially quit, and then I could come back in November. And that would be mutually agreeable to them. And the slow months, they would make do. They hired another hairdresser. I'll call her hairdresser B. And um, she was going to take up the slack in the summer. And that was great. So it was mutually acceptable to them that I would continue to build my clientele for Florida in North Carolina. Then I would come back with those clients along with the clients that would return to me in the fall. And that's what I did. So I continued to work out of courtesy to them in the rest of April and all of May. And off I went, packed up my car, left my brand new apartment with all new furniture, two bedroom, two bath. Uh, I can't rent it out because it's a HOA. And I drive my dogs and I live and breathe in North Carolina at the resort. Uh, in North Carolina, I'm booked up five days a week, eight hours a day immediately. What a departure from the five hotels and the hype around the Boca Raton Resort where I was doing nothing for eight hours a day. And here was a small resort in the Appalachians and I'm busy from the morning I could get there to the evening I leave. And I was building a clientele for Florida. I'm going to tell you what happened next, but only in the next episode. Because when I got back to Florida, they didn't give me my job, and I was crushed. I should have crumbled, but instead, I got strong. And then I got angry. So thanks for listening. John David and Goliath. I'll see you in the next episode. And please don't forget to subscribe and like and rate. 